from double digit thousands. <laughs> Who the hell are you, Phil Jackson? You're fired. The Knicks recently fired their team president, Phil Jackson. He'd been in the position since early 2014, when the team signed him to a five-year, $60 million contract. Immediately, this amount of money should have concerned Knicks fans. First, it tells you that Phil didn't really want to take this job, he just wanted money, which is why the Knicks had to pay him such an exorbitant amount of money just to be the president. Second, it inflates the importance of the position. By overpaying Jackson, you signal to the rest of the organization that he is more important than you. This became a serious problem, especially towards the end of Phil's tenure when he thought of himself as more valuable to the Knicks than any player, including Carmelo Anthony and even Kristaps Porzingis. But first, let's go back and detail the decisions that Jackson made over his three years as the president, and then give each one grades. I understand that I have hindsight on my side, so I'll try to be as fair as possible when judging Jackson's moves. The first thing Jackson did when the season ended after he was hired and the Knicks didn't make the playoffs was to fire Mike Woodson and his entire coaching staff. This was probably a reasonable move given that Jackson wanted to move in a different direction and hire a coach who would implement his beloved triangle offense. Therefore, I give this an A-. Jackson wanted to implement his triangle offense because of the success he had had with Jordan's Bulls and Kobe and Shaq's Lakers. However, throughout his tenure, Jackson refused to realize that the players didn't know and didn't want to play that style of offense. Not to mention, teams like the Golden State Warriors and San Antonio Spurs were revolutionizing offenses into record-breaking systems. Jackson's stubbornness is likely what cost him Steve Kerr as a coach. Kerr chose to go to the Golden State Warriors instead of the Knicks, and we saw how successful that has been for Kerr and Golden State. Jackson settled for Derek Fisher, a player he had coached with the Lakers, but who had no coaching or management experience beforehand. Because of Jackson's stubbornness with his offense, I give this move a C-. It would be worse, but it was not clear yet that the triangle would fail as hard as it did. However, he lacked the foresight to see how it wouldn't work, and that means he deserves a bad grade. Jackson signs Carmelo Anthony to a 5-year, $124 million deal, securing him for the rest of his prime playing career. This move made perfect sense given how valuable a player Melo was at the time, in July of 2014. Although the move limited their financial flexibility, it was something that had to be done to make the Knicks a playoff contender, so I give the move an A. In January 2015, Jackson decides to shift key team members J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert. I don't necessarily dislike moving these players, but what the Knicks received in return was well below the value of Shumpert and JR. They received Lou Amundsen, Alex Kirk, and a second round pick from the Cavs. This is a terrible deal in terms of value, but not in terms of intent, so I only give it a D instead of an F. The Knicks start the season 4-19, and people begin to realize that the triangle is a failure. In February of 2015, Jackson says that, So far, my experiment has fallen flat on its face. By the end of the season, the Knicks have a record of 17 and 65, the worst in team history. In the 2015 draft in June, Jackson makes one of his only intelligent decisions as a team president. He drafts Kristaps Porzingis with a fourth overall pick. Few people supported the move, given how unknown Porzingis was before being drafted. People saw some potential but doubted Porzingis' ability to contribute immediately. Porzingis would go on to silence those critics, and in his first two seasons, he has shown superstar potential. Looking back, it's hard to see how anyone would disagree with this pick anymore, given the draft talent available with the fourth pick, so I give it an A. In February 2016 of the following season, the Knicks are at 23-31. and 31. Jackson decides to fire the coach he hired just one season ago, Derek Fisher. This mid-season move is hard to justify, especially given that the Knicks went on to win just 9 more games and lost 19. Fisher never seemed to be a quality coach, but mid-season firings signal to the world that the organization is in chaos, and it tells the players that the season is lost. Despite this, Jackson said that, I'm still in it, and I'm in it to win it, so to speak. 
this confusing statement gave no confidence to the players, and as a result, I give this overall move a D-. After another failure of a season in 2016, Jackson hires Jeff Hornacek to be the new head coach. It's unclear whether or not Hornacek will run the triangle offense, and he suggests that he would only run a triangle-inspired offense. This may have been Jackson accepting the fact that his system had failed, and Hornacek was a proven coach, having led the Phoenix Suns in a tough Western Conference. This is a B-plus move, given that Jackson was willing to part with the triangle and hire a more experienced coach. In the same month of June, Jackson trades for Derrick Rose and some smaller assets from the Bulls. He gives up Robin Lopez, Jerry and Grant, and Jose Calderon to get the Rose package. This was, at best, a questionable move. Rose was playing far below his MVP level before his significant list of injuries began to affect his career. Rose's story is a sad one, but it was clear to most people that Rose would never return to his peak level of play after ACL and meniscus injuries. Significantly, Rose was still being paid like an NBA superstar, and the Knicks had to pick up his inflated salary. This meant that they were overpaying for a fragile player who couldn't shoot three-pointers and who had not shown any sign of elite play in years. Rose was a big name, and that would sell tickets. However, as a basketball move, I give this a C grade. The following month, Jackson signs free agent Joakim Noah to a four-year $72 million deal. Noah is already 31 years old at this point, and he had just missed a significant portion of games due to nagging injuries. Noah was a decent complement to Rose when Rose was an MVP level point guard. Back then, Rose carried the team on offense by driving and scoring or dropping off passes to Noah for easy layups. That allowed Noah to be the elite defensive player he was early on with the Bulls. However, coming off several injuries at the age of 31, Noah's large, long-term deal was idiotic at best and suicidal at worst. This move deserves an F. In November of 2016, Jackson offends the best player in the league, LeBron James, in an interview where he states that you can't hold up the whole team because you and your mom and your posse want to spend an extra night in Cleveland. The use of the racially charged word posse offends James, as well as many other players and analysts and puts Jackson in a bad light. It certainly ended any hope of signing LeBron to the Knicks in the future, and Carmelo Anthony was also offended by Jackson's use of the word, signaling the beginning of the end of the relationship between Jackson and Anthony. Once again, this is an F move for the team president. In January of 2017, Derrick Rose does not show up for a home game against the Pelicans without informing the Knicks beforehand. He receives no punishment for doing so, later citing family issues as the reason for his absence. Jackson's inaction on this event shows a lack of control over the team, and a lack of respect from the players to the organization. This is another F move for Jackson. In April of this year, Jackson says about Carmelo Anthony that, We've not been able to win with him on the court at this time. I think the direction with our team is that he is a player that would be better off somewhere else and using his talent somewhere where he can win or chase that championship. Right now, we need players that are really active, can play every single play defensively and offensively. This signals to Anthony that he is no longer wanted in New York, ultimately pitting Jackson and Carmelo against each other. It becomes a he goes or I go situation, which is a move that a team president should never make. Once again, this is a terrible move worthy of an F. Earlier this month, Jackson came under heavy fire from analysts like Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman for his comments on Kristaps Porzingis. In response to Porzingis missing the end of season exit interview, Jackson decides to publicly state that he is open to trade offers for Porzingis, who appears to be a once in a generation type player. A lot of rumors flying around and reports too that you've been listening to some trade offers for Kristaps Porzingis. Is that in fact happening? We're getting calls. Jackson says that in doing so, he is looking out for the future of the Knicks franchise, despite the fact that Porzingis is only 21 years old. He says that in his 30 years of experience, he has never seen a player not come to an exit meeting. This is blatantly untrue, as Shaquille O'Neal skipped two exit interviews under Phil Jackson when he was with the Lakers. Once again, by trying to establish his dominance and control over the team, 
Jackson only further alienated key members of the franchise. This was the final F move for Jackson and signaled the end of his time in New York. Looking back over Jackson's tenure, it's a story of hope at the initial signing to absolute despair and anger by the time he was fired. And I must say, I feel sorry for Knicks fans. We can only hope that the Knicks franchise can sort itself out for the future or the city of New York will have to endure more terrible basketball 